Hello guys, welcome to X-Plane 11. We are in the Rift S. Oh, it's been a while since I've been in this headset. And do you know what? I still love this headset. I always have. And I thought it was about time I gave it some love. We're sat on the ground in the beautiful, ever gorgeous Thrander Beaver, which is a brand new um, release from those clever folks. And you know what? It's beautiful. It's actually my favorite favorite tail dragger in x plane 11 without a doubt it's beautiful and we're going to take this up around scotland for a bit of a jaunt and actually we're going to fly over ben nevis because orbex have finally sorted out the mesh issues so without further ado i'm not going to mess around here we're going to taxi get rid of that uh, control column uh, parking brake yeah, it's great to be back in the Rift S, guys. Um, I really do feel being in X-Plane in the Rift S is like putting on an old pair of boots. You know that old pair of boots that you just love wearing? And, you know, they're a bit worn now. They could, you could do with an upgrade. But you just love wearing them. This is, this is what X-Plane is about for me now, really. But specifically in the Rift S. Because I've always said, guys, and I, I really do, you know... I've I've said this and I still think the same thing. The Rift S in X-Plane is a match made in heaven. With the OVR tool, everything is beautifully smooth. The image is good enough, you know. I mean, it's not on par with the G2. Of course it isn't. Nothing is, to be honest. But it's still really nice, especially if you bump up the super sampling to around 1.5, 1.6. I've actually got mine set a bit higher, actually, today because I'm so used to the G2. Right, anyway, flaps are coming down and we are going to go for a takeoff. This is a sprightly bird and it's a tail dragger at heart, so you've got to be really careful. Put a bit of forward stick there. Whoa, you see what I mean, guys? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I'm still perfecting my takeoffs with this beast. That wasn't brilliant, but never mind. I don't think anyone spotted us. I think we got away with it. So yeah, this is just, it's so good to be back in Orbex, Chewworth, Great Britain, in X-Plane 11, in a beautiful brand new aircraft from a top developer like Branda. And you know what? It's also great to have a working controller, which will be fixed soon, guys. Don't worry. Laminar are on the case. But you know what? If I ever choose to fly an X-plane, chances are, nine times out of ten, I will be in the Oculus Rift S. I actually thought about selling this uh, not long ago. Um, oh, by the way, actually, I've sold my Reverb G1 now, guys, but um, it's gone to a subscriber quite by accident, actually, so I hope you're enjoying it. It's a fantastic headset, without a doubt. But I must admit, I'm not going to get rid of my Rift S. I absolutely love it. I think it's, um, it's a fantastic headset, really. Works well in a number of different sims. And it only takes, you know, a few minutes for your eyes to adjust to the uh, the different display. There is a screen door, of course there is, but uh, you know what? If you're not looking for it, you don't see it. This aircraft, it's got under my skin, guys. It really has. There's not many aircraft, I can say, that really give you that sense of being in the real thing. The sense that it's living inside your computer, it's a living breathing aircraft and this is one of those birds that has managed to pull it off we'll go in the back here give you a bit of a tour around look at it all the scratches there on the struts which of course if you don't like scratches if you like your aircraft perfectly clean you can change all that in the options which is <laughs> pretty cool but I like to see it rough and ready really really sort of you know, a beaten up old aircraft. How it should be. I literally feel like I'm in my own Indiana Jones film. It just feels 
feels so damn real to me. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm using this CH Eclipse yoke for this particular flight, since this is more of a kind of yoke, or really controlled column aircraft. It's quite an unusual design, but you see there it's very yokey in its appearance, so it just feels right to, to use my CH Eclipse yoke. But I've been having some fantastic flights in IL-2 uh, and with the using the new Flying Iron Spitfire as well in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the Authenticit Spitfire yoke. It's really an amazing piece of kit. Anyway, we're going to head down to Glencoe and uh, we're going to check out Ben Nevis, which is the highest mountain in the United Kingdom, not just in Scotland, but in the, the UK as a whole. Um, and previously, um, Orbex's sort of rendition of Ben Nevis was a bit of a, a disappointment because the mesh was just all over the place. And they did say they would fix it. It's taken them a while, but, you know, hats off to them. They are, you know, true to their word, they've actually sorted it out. So I guess it's when data is available. It's, not something you can easily do and I'd imagine they'd have to completely change uh, well a large area of mesh just to get that area right because I can't imagine they could just go in and do a little bit of handiwork just on the mountain itself I don't really know how it works but uh, yeah it looks fantastic now I've already done this flight in the G2 but I thought do you know what I know a lot of you guys still have Oculus Rift S's and I just want you to know guys that I absolutely adore this headset still I love it it frustrates me to hell <laughs> um, that it doesn't it's not a proper upgrade from the cv1 but having said that i think having this as my second sort of secondary headset is uh is perfect i think it complements the g2 really well just like it did with the g1 anyway enough of me rambling on like an annoying person i'll uh, go outside and let you enjoy some of these views and i can already see ben nevis coming up in the distance there Enjoy. Literally, this bird has the best Doppler flyby sounds I've ever heard to date. I can still hear it. They sound pretty good, even in the Rift S uh, crappy speakers, but I've got to say, I am missing the index headphones of the G2, without a doubt. Oh, I love Scotland so much. Bonnie Scotland. I really miss this place. I. I was going to go here this year, but unfortunately COVID happened, but I am determined to get here very soon and tour around on two wheels. It's really good for the soul, but I'll tell you what, so is VR. I'm actually a bit stressed today, guys. I've got a bill for my car for £850 because I've had some issues with it, fortunately. It's a great car, but uh, fortunately I, do a, I just do so many miles for work, so I could really do with a TBM or something. <laughs> My own personal little uh, plane to get me around. But uh, yeah, so I was a bit annoyed. So what I did was, I couldn't go anywhere because unfortunately we're in tier three at the moment in the UK where I live. So that means I can't really go out anywhere. I thought, right, I'll go in VR then. And you know what? It actually helps. I feel so much more chilled out. I've been flying in IL-2 today, I did some Microsoft Flight Simulator, I did a bit of a DCS mission in the Hornet, and I finished up here in the Viva. And you know what, it's properly chilled me out, and I haven't spent a penny doing it either. Just, what a wonderful way to escape the reality of the world right now. Beautiful views here, absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I think I need to go down here. This is Glencoe, or be part of it anyway, so we'll just head in this direction. I 
I've been on that road many times. Not this year though, unfortunately. Pretty indeed. Orbex have done a fantastic job with this uh, sort of ortho series that they did for X-Plane. A little bit overshadowed now by Microsoft Flight Simulator, the fact that you can actually get pretty much this level of detail, bar the uh, sort of you know points of interest, out of the box. But this still has a very special place for me. X-Plane has a very special place for me. I don't know why people feel they have to choose between them it makes no sense just fly both sims or in fact fly all of them Aerofly FS2, IL2, DCS, Elite Dangerous I know that's a bit different but hey you know X-Plane of course and Microsoft Flight Simulator they're all fantastic and have their own charm and each depict a certain type of flying experience that the other can't I still feel that X-Plane has the upper edge for flight modelling but then it's been around for donkey's years, so it's going to, isn't it, you know? And, you know, aircraft like the Thrunder, Viva, that I'm flying, is second to none. It's absolutely a perfect and incredible realistic rendition of the real thing. At the moment, all we've got really is a few Caranada aircraft and uh, the default birds, which don't compare yet. But I'm sure they will over time. So this is Glencoe guys, so I'll just uh, leave you again with a few outside shots so you can enjoy this beautiful wildland that is Scotland here in X-Plane 11 Vulcan in the Rift S. It's funny how much I've noticed the colours, how washed out they feel in the Rift S. And I always used to say the Rift S colours was really vivid compared to the G1, but now the G2 is out. My goodness me, it's the opposite way around again. Never thought I'd say that about the Rift S, because the colours are actually really good, but this feels like an LCD display. Whether the G2 almost feels like a Super AMOLED display because of that IPS panel. This bird, look at it, and honestly, this is fantastic. Look, you can have a look at your engine at work here if I click on that. I love that. I actually, I just can't believe how they've they've managed to, the animation is very believable, showing you everything that the engine is doing inside. And you've got access to all sorts of things here, all in real time as well with this bird. It's an absolute masterpiece. If I could say one thing about this aircraft, it's a masterpiece. That is Ben Nevis to our right here, which means Fort William should be down there somewhere. If you're interested guys in me doing some sort of little tour around Scotland, please let me know in the comments. I thought actually about doing a UK tour again, where you know I could just really just in detail show you all the places I know and love. Especially since the new Microsoft Flight Simulator is going to get a UK update very soon. So I could either do it in X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator, or even both. But that, that, yeah, that's definitely Ben Nevis over there. So we'll make our way over there a little bit. This is beautiful. Look at the way that the colour correction and the beautiful scenery is blended together and the masking there. I've, I've said this before, guys, and I still will say this now, that 
if I had just the UK to fly around and one aircraft like the TBM or the Thranda Viva which has now joined that club for the next couple of years I'd still be very happy we are so spoiled properly spoiled now with uh, flight simulators I will never become complacent with that no chance and also while I'm at it I can definitely tell you I will not be getting rid of my Rift S anytime soon I'm having the best time right now in this headset So there we are, that is Fort William down there. And you can get a beautiful steam train to Malag, as the locals call it, Malag. And that, that is the, the famous Harry Potter line, but Melissa's just laughed at me for, for my pronunciation. It's Malag, I think. I think that's it, I might be wrong. And then you've got the famous viaduct as well, which is modeled, by the way, in this sim. In this, uh, sorry, not in this sim, but Orbex has modeled it. Right, here we are, the majestic Ben Nevis. I think it tops out about 4,000 feet. One of the highest, well, the highest mountain in the UK. And before it was an absolute mess. The mesh was all over the place, but now it looks exactly as I remember it. I mean, even the shape of it is spot on. So we're gonna have to climb up here because we're only at 2,000 feet. We need to uh, pull the mixture back a little bit, give us some RPMs, put the mani manifold pressure up a little bit, if I can put that in the green, and she's, I mean that engine, you can really feel a pull. the height that I'm at right now in VR. We're going to go right to the top here, just checking on the uh, speed, which is getting a bit slow, but I think we've made it. Welcome to the summit of Ben Nevis. how when you reach the summit of Ben Nevis everything around you feels so small like all the mountains just look pathetic <laughs> look at that it feels really flat now we'll start making our way down again oh wow looking at the side there and down at those massive tundra tires I really feel high up here and just to let you know guys, we're getting 40 frames per second on the button. But of course we are in a, a very, I suppose sparse area, but with all the complex mesh, I've got all my settings pretty much maxed. It's still very impressive that we can uh, reach these sorts of dizzy heights of 40 frames per second, especially when uh, I'm recording with OBS. butter smooth so guys that's really it for this video I hope you enjoyed it touring around Scotland if you'd like to see more of the Rift S in X-Plane 11 or any other sim let me know I still love this headset and nothing's changed and uh, yeah there it is Ben Nevis with the correct mesh Weldon Orbex I'm impressed thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.